My next guest found fame at the age of just 19, playing Robert Redford's love interest. She went on to star opposite some of Hollywood's greatest leading men, including Robert De Niro, Brad Pitt and Sean Penn. But despite a long list of such illustrious roles, we love her best as the Countess of Grantham. Mrs Hughes, I understand that you're not well. Whom do you understand that from? Because if the doctor... It wasn't Dr Clarkson. It is not confirmed that I am ill, Your Ladyship. I've had a test and I'm waiting for the results. But I am perfectly capable... Mrs Hughes, I only want to say one thing. That if you are ill, you are welcome here for as long as you want to stay. Lady Sybil will help us to find a suitable nurse. I see. I don't want you to have any concerns about where you'll go or who'll look after you, because the answer is here and we will. Please welcome Elizabeth McGovern. <laughs> Oh, looks, it's always a shock, Elizabeth, seeing you Edwardian ladies in Elizabethan costume, yes. I, Elizabeth Sorry. II. So, I know. a relief to get out of the, the corsets and the, you know. Yes, it is. But you must wear them for half your life now, I suppose, in a way. It's easing up a bit because, of course, we're 1923, so now I have uh, a, quite a loose dress, so I'm happy. You're happier. Yeah, more happier. comfortable. Yeah, I was talking last week anymore. to. Phyllis Logan, we saw there, Mrs Hughes came on, and she uh -huh. was saying about this amazing schedule, which is sort of 11 days every fortnight, which is quite hard going. I mean, that's it's pretty intensive for six months of the year. Yeah, I don't think people realise how quickly Downton has to be shot. There are a lot of scenes we do every day. Mm. It's, it's almost like uh, the, the biggest challenge of it is physical. It's, it's literally just staying awake for those yeah. long days and in, in good shape. Had you any idea that it would be viewed by now it's 120 million people see Downton now all over the world? What's the reaction in the States when you go back there? What do you... It's gratifying, I have to say. Uh, I, I mean, in a way, I think Americans feel especially fond of Downton Abbey if they have discovered it because it kind of crept through the back door. It came on a public TV station ironically because uh, that's the way much of tv is seen in in england and very little tv is seen in america but it's a station with no commercials that's financed by the public and so uh, people that discovered downton abbey felt they owned it they felt they'd found something mm -hmm. uh, small and special so i think they're especially passionate about it when they see the actors that they've come to love and, yeah. and know from the series. Do you get bound up in the plot as well? I mean, you're right, you're, you're an actor, you know, you, it's a professional job, but at the same time, with the feelings of your character, do you get curious to know how Cora's going to develop? And now with this tragedy at Christmas and Matthew going, you've lost your daughter, I don't want to remind you of that tragic circumstance, but you know, yeah, uh, and now Matthew's gone. I mean, this is a house in, in deep mourning now. How far have we moved on when we get the series in autumn between Matthew's death and and your start period. Uh, Am I allowed to know that? We are definitely very much still in the shadow of the tragedy. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think time will move more slowly this season. Oh, that's a relief. We don't like it going too fast because we want to eke out this programme, you know. <laughs> Keep them going for 46 I series. Agree. Well, I agree. You'd be happy doing it for 46 series. Well, yes, I, I'd be happy doing it for as long as it feels right to do it. Yeah. But I, I like all the details that we take time to explore. That's my favourite thing. And, yeah. and uh, what I'm very happy about is in the season we're about to shoot, we'll rediscover certain characters that we s met in the first series, and I'm not saying anything. Oh, you beast! <laughs> you are a tease, but I Elizabeth. will say that um, uh, the people that we met series one might make reappearances and that's all very satisfying if you've really followed the show closely. Oh lovely, I hope that yeah. little maid called Gwen comes back because I was ever so fond oh, of her she and she went off to work the telephone exchange. Yes. It's sad what I know about this series. <laughs> <laughs> you do have another life. You have a life as a singer in a band. Tell us how this started. Well we've been a band for years, way before Downton Abbey ever came into existence, uh, but we've gotten this new lease on life 
of course, because um, because the lead singer is quite well known notoriety. on the box. Now. Yeah, which wasn't um, in the plan. But we've been having a great time because as yeah. a result of it all, we've been on tour and traveling all over England and I'm getting to know England in a way I never thought I would. Sure you did. Um, talking to people, having great shows. Uh, we've got two more shows, one in London at the Union Chapel and one in Milton Keynes at the Stables. And um, we're just You're having a You're clearly having a ball. Let's yeah. have a look at this. Is Sadie and the Hotheads, where the lead singer you will definitely recognize. So we have a day job, a it's, real... Yeah, you, you I, it's future. funny, because I, I go out into the audience, I've got this guitar, and we're in, I don't know, um, Winford Milton or someplace, <laughs> and they kind of are there because they seem Downton Abbey, and I see the looks on their face, they're going, like this. <laughs> and they're, they're by the end of the show, I'm happy to say, they're smiling. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, but we, ha we really have to sort of, the, it's, a, it's a mental adjustment they have to make, which which I can understand. They were probably expecting easy. rather regal madrigals <laughs> or something. <laughs> a, string, a string quartet or something. Have you always sung though? I mean, because you live in this country now, don't you? I mean, you you know, you you resident over. Oh here. yeah, I've yeah. been here twenty years, and um, I still don't really feel confident saying that I do sing. Um, I have singers I work with that I have so much respect for that I would never call myself one. Mm. Um, I write the songs and I put them across, I think, is what I do. And then I'm working with this girl now, Philly Lopez, thank God, who's an absolutely brilliant singer, and it's, it's something that I have too much respect for to say mm. that I do it. And you've got Lady Mary singing on there as well. Yeah, Michelle she does sing. Yeah? Yeah. So she's singing with you sometimes on some of the tracks? Yes, Somet yeah, she's on a lot of the tracks on, on the album, which is called How Not to Lose Things. So she's all over it, yeah. Wonderful. How Not to Lose yeah. Your Daughter. Keep her singing with you in a band. <laughs> Elizabeth will be back after the break when she and I will go head to head in a Downton Abbey duel and I don't know who's more nervous, she or me. <laughs> Plus how to beat those bingo wings. Plastic surgeon Dr Dirk and beauty editor Nadine Baggett help you turn back the years. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Still to come, Dr Dirk and Nadine Baggett on slowing down the ageing process. But first, it's time for a Downton duel. <laughs> Choose your weapons. Right. <laughs> mm, now, let the battle commence. Right. What caused the Countess of Grantham to miscarry in series one? She slipped on a bar of soap. <gasps> your turn. How did the valet John Bates sustain the knee injury that makes him limp? He was injured in the war as Batman to the Earl of Grantham. Very good. Which war? Oh. Which war? First World War. What does Lady Sybil... Was it? No, no, the no. one before that. Yes. Uh, sorry, what does Lady Sybil say are the only two things anyone ever learns from a governess? Uh, how to dance and how to drink, eat? No. <laughs> French and how to curtsy. <laughs> What are the names of Lord Grantham's Golden Labradors? Oh, one's called Isis and the other one's called... can't remember. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Oh. 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 How did dashing Turkish... This is easy. <laughs> How did dashing Turkish <laughs> diplomat Mr Kemal Pamuk cause a kerfuffle in series one? By dying in Lady Mary's bed. Oh. What is the name of Butler Carson's old music hall double act? Oh, that's really tough. And it wasn't Flanagan oh. and Allen. I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't remember what he looked like. And it was Nicky Henson who played him, wasn't it? No, was it? I'm not going to. Go on then. I'm What's not the sorry, answer? Not What's qualify. the answer? The Cheerful Charlies. Cheerful Charlies! <laughs> and the winner is Lady Glanson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Elizabeth. Album as herself, How Not to Lose Things. It's Sadie and Hotheads is out now, and Sadie and Hotheads are on tour till the 18th of February. My thanks to Elizabeth McGovern and Lisa Riley. Thank you very much. Ah, the shame. Anyway, last night's Bachelor Awards ceremony saw some.